OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello everybody, my name is Christy Reyes and this is about tips and tricks about Canvas you may not know. There is a full detailed handout that you can get by opening up your phone or mobile device and scanning that QR code after you open your camera. Or you can go to this bit.ly URL, bit.ly uh, forward slash OTAN TDLS Canvas tips. Or if you miss all of that, you can always email me and I'd be happy to send you this PDF just to give you a glimpse of what that looks like. It's a really complete um, handout with instructions and many different resources that you can look at. So, um, well, our time is pretty limited, even though uh, OTAN was uh, generous to give me 90 minutes. I may not get through everything, but again, this handout will really help you. So hopefully, um, some things you'll definitely be able to follow along with. Some things I would just say, hey, just I'll let you know, just watch for a moment because, you know, all of us going step by step, it, that would use up a lot of time. But um, this is kind of hopefully what I can cover in this time, um, talking about your course entry points, your course card, your homepage, banners and buttons, talking a little bit about navigation um, in your settings. There is something called syllabus. Do any of you use the syllabus in Canvas? Okay, yeah, yeah you do. You Okay, um, because it's not the greatest. <laughs> and so a lot of us use something called a liquid syllabus because it can be much more dynamic and beautiful, but we can use those two together. So I'll talk about that and you can publish it in a way that students can access it without ever having to log into Canvas as well. So that's the reason why a lot of us use a liquid syllabus is because we want to send that out well in advance of students starting a course, and they may not even know their login yet, right? So I'll talk a little bit about that. And um, do you use announcements? Okay. And do you usually see them at the top when you log in? Okay. You can set the number, you know, so the default may be zero. But if you want students to be able to see some of the most recent announcements going in uh, chronological order, you can set the number of announcements in um, the navigation, or excuse me, from the homepage. And then um, how many of you have taken any coursework about making your online content accessible? Very few. I don't know if you know. It is the law <laughs> and we are very behind. We are very behind. And so I'll talk a little bit about um, accessibility in Canvas. There are certain things we should do in creating our content. And luckily there is an accessibility checker within Canvas, but it's not perfect, okay? Um, I'll talk about embedding a little bit. Um, I'll talk about page and uh, content history and I don't know if it's ever happened to you. Probably not. You're all perfectionists and never make any mistakes, I'm sure. But um, if you ever accidentally delete something, you there's like a 95% chance that you can get it back, okay? Um, do you know about requirements and prerequisites? I know that my colleague here does. Anybody have some um, knowledge about that? Okay, you're in the right place then. And um, you probably know how to course copy, but um, sometimes, you know, in the past, I've taken some online courses and they've had me create some content and it's not my school uh, resource. And I want to grab that and not copy, paste, copy, paste. So there are ways you can download content to import into your uh, like school account, for example. SpeedGrader, do you use that already? Some of you, okay. And then more as time permits and questions answer. So I don't know if we'll get through half of this, but we'll try to get through as much as we can, okay? So let's me, let me go ahead and get started here. So not that page, but here. Does anybody know what those little boxes are called? Tiles. Tiles or course cards. I've heard them at one, which is for the California Community Colleges. They call them course cards, but I like to call them tiles. I don't know which one is right. So use the terminology you, you like. Um, the shell is the, the whole course, but this the entry point is the tile or card. And you can see I'm on some different committees and my department and things for my school. And this is just really not exciting. 
the plain green box. Um, I don't know about your school. At my school courses, when they our school sets up our, our course shelves, it's NCESL 45, section 1350. Students have no clue what that is. And so, you know, you can give a nickname by clicking there, you can change the color, but it's really much, much better if you have some visual image that's maybe repeated on your class syllabus so that students can identify your particular course with. One time, um, quite a while back, I always have students set up their profiles here and they took all of their little profile pictures and put it into one little box. And so it was very clear where to enter the course they saw themselves. But it is important to have a, a visible uh, entry point with your course tile or course card. And so how do you usually create your course tile or card? What do you use? Canva. Canva. What else? Okay, so Canva is the go-to tool this, of the moment. Well, I, um, I want to show you one simple way too. Um, when you're looking on social media, like maybe you have your Instagram account, do you ever see these really nice quotes with a beautiful picture? You ever see that? Yeah. Well, there's, this is a simple, simple way to, in, in an instant or two, to make your course card. You can spend lots of time on Canva, but this is one really simple way, and this is called Quozio. And so just look at when you scroll down completely free, you don't even need to make an account, okay? Quozio, and this is on the handout, so you don't need to write it down. But, um, you know, you see these kind of different quotes. Yeah, oh, yeah, you've seen those before, haven't you? So um, you see this course card that I have right here? That I'm getting ready for my summer class already. <laughs> and so, you know, students, uh, yeah. Our school is just minutes from the beach and I, I kind of sell my classes. Yeah, you can you can go study from the beach on Canvas. That's OK. So um, in Quozio, I would maybe just go like this ESL level seven at Miracosta College. And who said it? Well, that's me. I'm going to put my name. OK, now there are horizontal and vertical choices. So as you're going through, you want to look for the one that's the most square, okay? So I go here, I click create my quote. Oh, it gives me a preview. Uh, this, is, this one's a little bit too vertical. So I was looking through earlier just to save time, and I found one that I kind of liked over here. Let's see if it pops up. Okay, here we go. This one's going to be perfect for me. So there's my course card. Okay, all I need to do is click on finish and download it and it saves it as a little JPEG, okay, a little image file. So Quozio, you know, that, that would be fun for other class projects. I've, I've used it with students when I have them uh, write their, about their class, their personal motto, and that's their little visual aid, okay? So how do I get the course card right here? How I do that, is I'm going to enter my course. Who knows what I do next? Settings. settings, right. Where are the settings? Bottom left. Okay, so I go to settings and there I already have something there, but if I didn't, it would say, have a little image that says import picture, right? And that's how I could get it there. So Quozio would be one really easy way. Of course, Canva. It would be, you know, if as you create your teacher brand, right? We all have our special style. My, my colleagues have this. You create your teacher brand and then your all of your course content is kind of having this similar look and feel. That's you. That's unique to you. So when you go to Canva, you know that it's free. And um, I'm just going to type in, um, I'm going to go to logo. Logo is the best for, oops, logo, not log, logo. Let me type that in. Get this out of the way, logo. And, and I can't type very well. Then I have all kinds of different options. And then from there, I can also create my course banner. But um, very simple, very customizable. Like you just choose you know, a style that you like, change the colors, download it as a JPEG, and that can be your course card as well, okay? So that's um, one entry point, course card, all right? Of course, in a moment, we're going to talk about your homepage. That is the most important part because that is the, the welcoming embrace for your students. 
if one time um, I observed a very, very experienced online instructor from my college, she teaches Spanish. She's a beautiful woman. And she's like, she has a sense of humor, a sparkling personality. And I observed her online course um, as part of her tenure review. And I did not see one ounce of her in the course, right? So I was able to give her that good feedback and she, she you know, changed everything. But students need to see you. They need to see you. So probably you do a lot with your onboarding. Maybe you send out welcome messages, like a little video. That's important. But then online, it's very isolating. So they need to always see you when they enter the course, okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about in a moment. Moving on, though, I want to go back to navigation for a moment, okay? Here, the far left is global navigation. There's nothing much you can do there. That's that's not anything you can change except for your profile. You should definitely put your image there and a little bit of information, right? So you just go there and um, you go to profile and put your picture. It's really important when to show students how to do that too. They don't always want to put a picture. That's fine. You know, if they want to have an image of, you know, their favorite soccer team, whatever. Okay, but, you know, if, if they're mostly studying online in the LMS and they're doing discussion posts, it's good to have a visual. So over here we have in the regular menu, home, announcements, modules, grades, assignments, quiz, oh my goodness. If I leave all of those open to students, what's going to happen? They're going to, I mean, they'll probably start clicking on quizzes and take a, if I don't have that hidden, they're going to take a quiz that's maybe not even for this term, right? <laughs> Sometimes we forget to unpublish things and they'll be like, you didn't even teach us. Well, I didn't even, wh what are you talking about, right? So how many items are good to have? As few as, as few as possible. So you can see I have hidden the, the eyeball with the slash through it. All of those are hidden. I, I keep the homepage open. The modules, well, I um, I do have on the homepage the current module at the top so students can find it. But um, grades, well, if, if your class is really not graded, you may not have that, but do you give your students grades? Do you? My students get grades. And even though it's non-credit, it's never gonna follow them. They wanna know and they deserve to know how they're doing. They deserve to know. And so the grade book is there for them, okay? So pretty much I hide everything because assignments, quizzes, discussions, everything else goes within modules, okay? So how do we get rid of these things? How do we hide them? Anybody know who can tell me? Settings, thank you. So we go to settings. And then where do we go? Navigation. Navigation, okay? And you'll see a whole bunch of things listed up there. How do I, how do I hide them? Okay. You drag it down. So if I decide, oh, actually, they don't need to see the grades after all, I just drag it down. Now, is it hidden? Yeah. No. I need to go to the bottom and save. That's usually because it's so far down to scroll. We often forget that, right? So now I can see that everything is hidden. Sometimes when you're creating a brand new course, you're like, wait a minute. Right now my modules are open, but it says the modules are hidden, but I just went to navigation and I unhid, I, I put it to be visible, but it's not showing. Why do you think that would happen when you're creating a brand new course? You haven't published any modules yet, <laughs> okay? So once you publish a module, then it will be visible, okay? So can we change the global navigation on the far left? Good students, you're very fast learners. Can we change the menu items? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Question. Mm, not really. Let's try that. Let's try that. I don't think you can change the order. Maybe, let's try that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's try that. Let's put the announcements towards the top. Now, only only home will always stay at the top. So let's try to change. Right, right. Let's try to change modules, but then let's see what happens. Okay, so yes, we can. Okay, so we can, thank you. I learned from you. Hey, if you come up here, I'll go back there. 
No, okay. Um, so yes, just dragging around. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Did it change for me? Um, uh, yeah, I'll do it later. But yeah, you you probably wouldn't hurt to save. Now, do you, you have a website that you always have students visit? Like every yeah. week? What is the website? Tell me one website. Quizlet. Okay, what else? Quizzes. Okay, what else? Okay, tell me another one. <laughs> I'm trying to get the perfect one here. What? Padlet. Okay, what else? Amazon. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so um, you, you know, not all of, there, there are two ways that we can do this. And one way is that it will be embedded, but that doesn't always work for all websites. Okay. If it's a website that has lots of multiple buttons, it's not going to embed well, but you, you want to test it out. Okay. So does anybody know how I can add a different menu item over here? Anybody? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to go to apps. Okay. You will notice, depending on your school, I mean, there are just so many apps. Have you heard of some of these? I, I mean, Brain Pop, I know. I mean, uh, there are just so many. Yeah. So here's what you're going to put in the filter by name box. It's called redirect. Okay. Um, I This new one with the black arrow, I haven't tried that one out. That just came up very recently. So I don't know if any of you have tried that one. I don't even, I'm afraid to try it in front of you right now. So I'll just, I'll just reserve and go with what I know. I'm going to go with the blue one. Okay. Redirect tool. And what do you think I do now? Add app. So let's say I'm just going to I'm not going to use Padlet and all of those because I'm going to save those for later. Um, but let's say that there's a dictionary that I always have my students use, or I always have them when I'm teaching vocabulary every week, they're looking in an online dictionary, writing down definitions and using thesaurus.com to find synonyms, for example. For me, just to make it easy, you don't want to say keep the name as redirect tool. Your students don't know what that means. Okay, so you need to give it a name. And I'm just going to put school website. Just to demonstrate, okay? And I happen to memorize my school website. <laughs> See, I, I've used Britannica Dictionary and different ones before. So I'm going to put my school website. All right. So there are some options here. If you try it out and it is not embedded, then you want to definitely choose this force open in new tab, okay? So when students click on it, it's gonna have this button and it says click here and it will open in a new tab. But for beginning computer users, you know what happens, right? They open a new tab and they get lost and they're like, what, where am I? Mm -hmm. And they waste a lot of time. So you wanna test this out because it doesn't work with all websites, but I'm not gonna do it force in a new tab because I tested this one out. I'm gonna say for, uh, show in course navigation, show in account. I'm gonna ch check those three final ones, not the first one though, okay? Like that. I'm going to click add app. Oh no, where is it? I don't see it over here. I need to do what? Refresh. Let me see, there it is, school website. Way at the bottom, right over here, way at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna let's go to student view for a second just to see. Christy, there was a comment in the chat. Go ahead. Um, they they said that they can't seem to get rid of mine if they added. Is anybody else on that? Okay, that would be an integration. And you'll need to work with your school on that. I've tried some integrations. Do do all of you know formerly Flipgrid, now called Flip? I tried and tried. I talked to my IT people, another teach. No, we couldn't get it to integrate. So you need to work closely with your IT people with the integrations. Okay. Um, so uh, let me see if I can get to student view. I think my course is not published. So I'll just go here. Let me just click on the drum roll. And <gasps> when students click there, it's right embedded. They're not leaving Canvas at all. Okay. So that's nice. Again, check, try it out though. It won't work the embedded part. It might, you might have to choose the force open a new tab. Yes, sir. 
keeping left click or giving the option of good question. Let's try it. It stays in Canvas. Okay. Um, let me see if I have here. Um, I would show you that again in the past, I have just used that force and open a new tab because my students are a little more advanced in, but you know, you test it up. Yeah, exactly. Question here? Yeah. Could you, use, uh, could you just use the hot link there? Of course. Of course, yes. Um, so that would be a possibility. Put it right on your home page as a hyperlink. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Other questions? All right. So that's navigation. Um, moving on. Syllabus. Okay, I do have my syllabus hidden because I really, I mean, what it turns out to be is a list of assignments. Is that what your syllabus is? No. If you do want to keep syllabus in your menu, how could I include my liquid syllabus? How many of you are familiar with liquid syllabus, first of all? If you are not, my colleague right here is giving a presentation tomorrow about liquid syllabus, okay? <laughs> um, liquid syllabus is more dynamic than a PDF that you send students. It's got hyperlinks. You can embed a video of yourself. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. So what I have used before, let me see which one. Okay. Um, well, I used to use S'more. Do you know S'more? Um, S'more is for creating newsletters, but what I love about it is it looks really awesome on a phone and many of my students. And you see, this is a liquid syllabus because I have videos. I have hyperlinks. It's much more interactive. Um, the problem with some more is that um, after a while, you can't go back and edit. So I can't use the syllabus and change it for next term and then change it for, it's a, like a one-time deal, okay? You get a certain number of newsletters, like five for free. And I never pay for anything because I'm, I'm a poor teacher. So I never pay for anything. And so once I ran out of free newsletters with that one account, I use my Gmail, then I switched to my Yahoo, and then I use my family email, right? But then I decided um, maybe I'll try something different. But with some more, what you can do is you can get this copy or embed code right here. And I can go here and I can go and copy that embed code and um, back in the syllabus, if I decide to keep syllabus as a menu item, I can go to edit. And um, how do I embed something now, some code? There are a couple of different ways. I think it was only a comment from somebody who joined later. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so there are a couple of ways to embed. One is with those three dots in that cloud. Or if you get really fancy and you know coding, do you all know coding? We're supposed to be knowing coding, you know, evidently. But there's there's this um, this one down here too, okay? And I can just paste in. Let me go back and get the embed code one more time. No, that's a direct link, thank you. Here's the embed code, copy. paste. Now, if I decide to keep the syllabus, I decide to unhide it. Now students could see something more attractive because if you just create a page for your syllabus, unless you know coding, which will be our next step, maybe some of you will be training us on that next year at this time, right? Um, unless you know in, uh, coding, creating a really dynamic syllabus just in a Canvas page is a little bit tricky, okay? So um, another site that I've used before, nowadays I'm just using a Google site, it would be the same thing. I can, but embedding doesn't really work well with Google sites because I have these different tabs. So I would probably just get the hyperlink and put it in the syllabus. But at least then what I can do is students can see my syllabus as more dynamic and beautiful liquid syllabus in Canvas. However, what happens some of our students, they're, they're not getting the information about how to log in. They don't know 
you know, what their password is, and you want to get them going with your liquid syllabus and the onboarding process before the class starts, they don't know how to get into Canvas, and you've published everything here in Canvas. Luckily, there's a way to make your syllabus public and share a URL without them having to log into Canvas, okay? How you do this, and I have to do, use my cheat sheet here because it's a little bit, um, it's not something I usually do. So how you do this is in settings. So I'm gonna go to the far left settings, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and in navigation, I'm gonna go ahead and I have to make the syllabus visible. So I'm gonna have to find that guy down here somewhere. Tell me if you see it. Do, 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 do. There it is. Okay, see it's disabled right now. So I need to pull it back up here. Okay, where did it go? There it is. Okay, so maybe I wanna put it there. And then you need to make sure to save, right? And now um, my syllabus is now gonna be visible to students but I need to make that page public. So what I do for that is in settings, um, I'm here on course details and go down to, you see the visibility there, okay? So I'm gonna leave it at, um, I'm gonna leave it at course, but I'm gonna choose customize, okay? And um, what I want this to be, let me make sure I got the right thing. I think I'm going to put this on public, okay? I'm going to put it on public, um, syllabus public, okay? All right, let's see if it works. I'm going to update. Okay, I'm going to go to my syllabus page. I'm going to copy, oops, I'm going to copy this URL. I'm just gonna go open up Firefox, different browser real quick. And something that's not connected with Canvas right now. Oh, please work, please work. Hey, all I need to do, students don't need to log into Canvas. I can send that URL in an email. Oh, I don't know how to log in. No, it's okay. It's public. The whole world can see this if I want to share it with them. Did you know this before today? Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, so um, that is a way that you can make your syllabus public to the world without students having to log into Canvas yet if they're not quite set up. You know, sometimes students like, I wanna join your class, but I, I can't go register until tomorrow. You don't want them to get behind. So here's, here's a way to share all that information with them from the beginning, okay? So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There you go. That's that's a way for self-enrolled courses is you could have it in, housed in Canvas, but make it public so that you could send it out. Yeah. So, yes. Can they access only? That that would be all they can access. That's the only thing that you've made publicly available. That's right. All right. Um, one more thing in settings, um, and that is about the announcements. Um, let me just see if I have this one course open. Okay, so, you know, when students, this is a course I was taking, and so you see that there are three announcements. You can set the number of announcements students see when they log in from the homepage, right? How you do that is um, you're going to go back to your settings. Okay, and um, I, you know, if you don't see this in your particular course, different Canvas, let's, let's say accounts may have different settings. I notice, like I, I have the free Canvas version, I have a different Canvas that I'm working through through the state of California, and then I have, a not, I have like four different accounts, right? And they're not, they're all slightly different just based on what was made available. So hopefully you would see this, but if you don't, that's why, okay? When I'm on course details, when I go way, 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 way to the bottom, there are more options. 
And that more options way at the bottom show recent announcement. Well, maybe you don't want the announcement showing at all. That's fine. You can uncheck it. Maybe you want three. Maybe you only want one. Maybe you want 15. I wouldn't recommend. Okay. But um, maybe I just want two announcements showing at the top. And then, you know, there are other things here definitely that you need to have checked. Like um, one is, um, you know, maybe you don't want students to attach files to discussion. So there are more options here, as you can see. Um, so hopefully you see that in your count, okay? Um, but then I always need to update or it won't sit. So that is the way to limit or to expand the number of announcements students can see. You know that when you send an announcement, it goes to their email, but also if you want, you know, many of them do not check email, as you probably know. So you can also have them visible um, from the homepage. All right. So as I said a little while ago, um, your homepage is the warm embrace. Come on in. Kind of how you meet students at the door when they walk into the physical classroom. Your homepage is, hey, welcome on in. Remember me? Yeah, I'm your teacher. Here I am. So what sort of things do you have on your homepage? Like a nice banner. A banner. Message. Beautiful banner. A nice welcome message. Like your, your photo. A little video. Contact information. Three buttons, okay. A zoom, the link to Zoom, exactly. Okay, and um, so Mariana here, thank you. She came here for a reason. I paid her to be here to kind of be my crutch. And um, what do you use to create your banner? Canva. So if you're going to go with Canva, stick with Canva. Create your your teacher brand. If you're like, uh, Canva seems hard for me. Okay, well, learn it. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> But there are other options too. There are other options too. One option is creating a banner with PowerPoint. That's really simple. Like I don't have time to play with Canva. Then you can just go to PowerPoint, go to the design tab. Oh gosh. Well, you know, there with the uh, Office 365, there are some more beautiful designs. I don't know. I'll just choose something simple. Let's let's choose what should we choose? Which one do you like? I'll choose. Okay, I'll just choose that one really quick. All right. But that's that's too big to be a banner. That's gonna take up like they're gonna be scrolling. So what you need to do in the design tab is to change the size. Okay. So you go to design. And do you see slide size right there? Okay. I don't want standard or widescreen. I need to go to custom. Okay. And then again, slides viewed for banner. Okay. And then I click OK. And then eh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Oh, but look at that font. Let me see what size is that font. 7.2, I think I'll need a microscope. So no, uh, make sure to do something like 30 or so, okay? And then you can type in whatever. And let's go here, make it really, really big. And we can go 2.4, no. Let's make it like 28. And I probably want to drag that up a little. Anyway, you can make all kinds of designs. You can customize it. You can put in different text, whatever, okay? All right, I might want to position that a little bit better. But am I going to be able to put this PowerPoint slide as a banner? Yeah, no, I cannot import a PowerPoint slide that will view as an image. So exactly, I need to go to file. Now what? Save as, now what? Well, I'm gonna choose desktop, uh, this PC, and I'm going to choose uh, whatever. I, I didn't give it a name, but I'll just put banner, okay? And um, I'll put it on the desktop, but not as a PowerPoint. 
what do I need to do right here? Mm -hmm. I need to save it as a JPEG or PNG, either one, and save it just this one slide. And then I can check it. There it is. Um, I won't open it for you just to save time, but it, it's saved as a JPEG and that can be my banner. Okay. So that's one way. Of course, Canva, as you mentioned, is the other option. Um, but before I talk about that, I'll just talk about one other one, which is photo P. Okay. And, um, what you do there is you go to new project and you'll want to choose ads and you'll want to do like a, one of the leaderboards. And look at, they have some cute ones. See, and it's a similar thing as with PowerPoint or Canva. I, I, just, I just choose one. I change the words and download as a JPEG. So that's another option, you know, if you're in a hurry, okay? There are many um, cute ones. Like I think uh, my colleague here, Monica, talked about seasonal. You know, maybe you want to choose something springtime, change it up. Okay. So that's the other option. And as you said, the third option, of course, going back to Canva, well, I'm not going to choose logo, but if you go in and you type in canvas banner, there are some banners there as well. Okay. Oh, succulents. Yes. Very stylish. Okay. And so, so December, like all kinds. And you know that if you choose one with the lit, you see, I don't know if you can see this one. This one has a dollar sign. I have the free account. I'm not paying, forget it. Uh, so you want to choose one, not with the pro. So I'll probably have to choose some guy like this. And then you can just customize it. You can totally change it, right? To make it look whatever you like and download it as a JPEG. Okay, so your banner is very important. I'm going to close out some, some stuff real quick here. Oh, I forgot to talk about this one. If you have a class or maybe you work with teachers, some of you might be in administration, and you never see them because you're only in Zoom and only on Canvas or whatever, and you never see the students' faces, they never turn on their cameras. Well, I did this once, and it turned out really fun. Have you heard of Pixton? Okay, it's you have to pay for it, but you get like a, a week free trial. So it has to be turned around really fast. And not really good for open enrollment unless you want to pay for it. They have this, this option. And I on the handout, I have the links link to these instructions. Um, what you do is you set up a classroom. And let me just show you what my classroom looked like. <laughs> you give students the link and they create their avatar and it joins your classroom. And so you can see that's me. And then um, these are the instructions, but just to show you. So they had one week to do this. They put their, this was how I could sort of see my students who were not willing to share a photo. And then within that free week, I can click on these different parts. Like there's, it was around last year at this time, February. And then I, I downloaded this one before my free trial worked out, uh, came out for the end of the school year, you know? so. Um, you, can, you have to use it with, unless you want to pay within that. So you got to tell students today, make your avatar today because my free trial runs out tomorrow or something. Mm -hmm. But um, that could be your banner as well. And students enter your course and see themselves. So I wanted to share about that. I think it's kind of fun. All right. So um, I have here some kind of boring content for a homepage. Okay. I'm just going to copy that. I don't recommend copying content from Word. It's a bummer. It really is a bummer because you'd like to have that backup, but from Word into a Canvas page, because sometimes what happens? Yeah, what you see, I didn't put any bullets or anything here because is this ever happened to you? You copy from something and then you get double bullets or you know the numbering gets all messed up. So if you do copy and paste, don't do any formatting outside of Canvas, copy and paste and put it in Canvas and then do the formatting, okay? So here I have some content for my homepage, okay? Just kind of boring, just, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm just gonna demonstrate really quick. Um, we're going to go here. Making your homepage the first time is a little bit complicated. 
How many of you have made your homepage before? So probably the first time you're like, oh, oh, I got it. And then you, you probably don't make it again, do you? You just change it. And then this happened to me. I wanted to make a new course. I'm like, why isn't this working? Because it's a three-step process to make your homepage. We forget because we don't keep making homepages usually. We just edit, right? So I'm going to go here to my um, pages. And I'm going to go, where now? Where now to make a homepage? Page. I need to make a home page. So I'm going to put welcome to class. Okay. I'm just going to, oh, maybe I should go ahead and put in that banner. It's not my favorite. Okay. But I'll just put it in just so you see images, upload image. Where's that ugly banner? <laughs> there it is. Okay. So there's my ugly banner, but just wanted to demonstrate really quickly. Okay. So there's my ugly banner. Um, ooh, what about here? Just leave it. The law is if I have a vision impaired student and they use a screen reader to look at the homepage, it's not going to, they're not going to have an equal experience to a student who has vision. So if it's decorative, you can choose decorative. I, I, I will probably just put um, banner uh, for level seven with Christy Reyes. Okay. So then when, the, and if it says point JPEG, take that out. A screen rate reader will say banner for level seven with Christy Reyes. You don't want it to say point JPEG. You don't want it to say that. It reads everything on your screen. Okay. So then um, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I know it's ugly. I want to make it, I want to make it fill the entire space. I'm really not satisfied with it, you know, but I'm just demonstrating for, the, for you, okay? And then I have that content for my homepage. All right, what do you think? Should I use red and green and purple? Should I leave it like this? It's hard on the eyes. It's not very nice to read. So maybe what I will do in keeping with accessibility is use headers and styles. Okay, so this is what a lot of teachers do. Oh, I want this one to be bolder, so I'm gonna make it a bigger font size. No, no. If you want to indicate this is a subtitle, this is a sub subtitle, et cetera, you don't want to just change the font size. You need to go here to paragraph, your title of your page is header one. Header two is the next subtitle, okay? Mm, maybe here, um, I might even take out this information. Students don't really care about my section number. Okay, I'll just take that out then. Um, this one, maybe I will make heading three, okay? Font size 12 is okay, but I might make that, I don't know, I might make that a little bit bigger. But here, I definitely want to make this stand out, right? I might want to make certain things stand out. So that is the way to make things more prominent than just font size in keeping with 508 compliance. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay, I don't have a glamour shot, but I'll go ahead and put in a picture just to demonstrate. So, because, you know, you told me that pictures are important. So um, let's see if I have a picture available. I don't like it. Need I need a um, some teeth whitener and what else? But anyway, we'll just go here. Okay, because it's important that students see your picture. So again, look here. No alt text. I need to put photo. Or I don't even need to put photo. I don't even need to put that. I'm just going to put there, okay? Yeah, I am decorative, but I'll leave that. <laughs> so I submit. I can resize. Um, something I don't have time to show you today is padding. There is some code. You know, if you want a text wrap, typically when you put in an image and you try to do text wrap, it's right flesh next to the image. If you would like that code, that gives you some padding, you can email me, but I don't have time, unfortunately, to show you that because it's kind of complicated. 
but much smaller. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I would embed a video. I have a welcome video. If you have a tutorial, it's better that you make it yourself a short tutorial. Hey, students, a sc like a screencast. Hey, how you get started? Click here, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now I left modules open, but some of you said, you know, redundancy is actually good in this case. So students may click here modules to find my modules, but why don't I just let them know right up front here too? So what I can do, let's say that I want them, I don't, maybe the class information is secondary because I've already given that information. So what I might want to do here is put a hyperlink would be fine, but someone said something about buttons. How many of you use buttons? What do you use for your buttons? Canva. Yes. Or Canva. Canva or Canvas. Now, I hesitate to show you too much with Canvas because some of you will not have this in your Canvas account. Um, but there is this new, well, how old is it? What, six months old? For some accounts, you have icon makers right here, okay, that you can make buttons. You can use Canva. You could use PowerPoint. You could use Google Draw. Okay, create a little image, download it, okay? Um, but there on the handout, I have some websites that make it even easier for you that you don't have to draw or anything. Okay. One that I have here, let me find it. The button factory. Okay. Um, oops, let me get back there. Um, there are several. Some are a little complicated because there's coding. This one is simple, very simple. So let's say I want this one to be called week one. Okay. I have options for the font. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Roboto. Um, do I want it bold? Yes. Do I want it italic? No. I can make it bigger. Okay. I get a little preview as I'm going along here. I really hate that color. Let's see. Let's make it nice and blue. Ooh, no, that's over the font. I'll keep it white, but I will make the text shadow known. So you just go through. Um, I want it to fit to the text. Padding around the words, for example, but I really don't like that color. No way. There we go. Ooh, I like that one. What do I do now? I can just download it. If you love coding, well, go for it, baby, but um, I'm just going to download it. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to call that button week one, because I already made a button week zero ahead of time. And so I go over here, and um, I'm going to put in those two buttons. So here they go. They are images. So I'm going to upload the first one uh, on my desktop. I have, well, I created, a, it's a different style, but uh, just to demonstrate for y'all, here it is. Here's my week zero. Do you use a week zero? What do you put in your week zero module? Yes, all your orientation information. So you can see that's a different style. It's better to have all of them the same style, but just to demonstrate, and I'll just put in one more, just so you see, there's week one, okay. But there's one more step to get those to be going toward, I could have them you know, going down side by side. However, how do I link those to a module though? Okay. Well, again, what I need to give them an alt tag button week one is okay. I would probably take out that underscore. I would take out the PNG button week one. Okay. That would be okay for that. And then I need to select and which, which thing on the text editor here do I choose the link. Now what course link now what Modules. Okay, so let's say my week one is about inventions. Okay, and so um, I'm going to go ahead there. I'm going, uh oh, I see I have a problem. Do you see that I have a problem? What is my problem? This little image, bottom right, looks like a Da Vinci guy, right? I see a number one. I have something wrong with the accessibility. I'm going to click there and see what it is. It, it's because I didn't give a good name to the other button. 
So, and I need to spell it correctly. I know you English teachers don't get on me yet. Come on, give me a second. There we go. Ah, when you see these balloons, that's a celebration. That's a good, that's a good thing. Okay, party time. Um, some, some of you may have another image down here. Let me just save and publish for a second. I'm not satisfied with this, but just here to demonstrate for you today, um, cause it's quite ugly. Okay. But some of you may have, and I think we have at my school, but I'm not seeing it right now. Some of you, yeah, there it is. We have this little black button that's a secondary accessibility checker. I think it's called Pope Tech, am I correct? And um, that will also tell you other things that maybe the Canvas accessibility checker won't tell you because the Canvas accessibility checker is not perfect. Maybe you're doing yellow on white. That would not be good, right? So it can check. It's giving me, it says the same, I'm okay, but it's going to check many other things for me as well for accessibility. So that's kind of nice, Pope Tech, okay? But I, I look to be okay. I, I'll just go ahead and save it. I'll come back to it later. It's not, it's not my finished work, okay? So I've created it. Is it my homepage? Well, it might be because I was working on this course before. No, it's not. It's not my homepage because there are two more steps. How do I make that page my homepage? At uh, first, I need to go to pages. I need to find that page. And I need to make sure it's published. It is published, the green arrow. And I need to go to these three arrows. What am I going to look for next to the three arrows? Choose Uh-huh. Use as front page. No, well, let's see. Is it my home page? Let's see. Let's see. No, it's still not. There's a third step. All right. Third step. This is what we forget after, you know, only making a home page once. Now I need to do the third step. Choose home page because the default is for students to go to your course modules. I don't recommend. That is not the warm embrace. <laughs> okay. So page is front page. Now let's see if that worked. Yeah, now it's my home page. Okay. So that's a three-step process to create your home page. All right. Okay. So We've done buttons, we've done homepage. Um, I talked a little bit about accessibility. One other thing to, I think I sort of mentioned it, but if I did have a numbered list, don't type one period, two period, okay? So if I do put in a numbered list and things like uh, buttons, it's best to do that. Oh, I don't see that option. How do I find the options for number, numbering and bullets? The three dots, exactly. And so there, the buttons, I can see that button options, I can see the numbered list. It's better to do that in Canvas than copy and paste, all right? Okay, moving on. I have a few more things about accessibility in, uh, in the handout, but to save time, I'm gonna keep going. Um, questions so far? Yes. Uh-huh, let me show you that real quicky. So if anybody, no problem. If you um, join late or you missed, this is the QR code for the handout, or you can go to bit.ly um, forward slash OTAN TDLS Canvas Tips. And uh, there is a PDF that you can download showing you everything I'm going over and more. Okay. All right. So moving on, let me get back to my Canvas course. Um, next, what I want to talk a little bit about is, oh, one thing that I really like. Um, let me just go to one of my modules here. Oh, do you ever see these cute little emojis? Oh, so that's kind of a nice visual, like what I've seen in some teachers' uh, Canvas courses. If they have a text, they put a little emoji of a book or they have, oh, I don't know different things like start here, maybe they'll have a little um, compass type of icon, okay? How can, of course I could go on my phone, 
when I, you know, I can't create content on my phone. I'm not, I'm a Gen X, as, <laughs> I'm not a Gen Z or, or anything like that. How you can do this? Well, let's see here. Let's say you can put um, on the title of a module or a title of a page, any content, you can put an emoji. And if you're not on a phone or a tablet that has the emojis, well, you can do this this way. So let me go here and edit this. And let's say I want to put some sort of emoji there. Does anybody know how I can get emojis on a keyboard? The windows. the windows, if you're on a PC, Windows period, and I wrote it down in case you're a Mac person. If you're on a Mac, it's control, command, space bar. Okay, who knew? Um, but my colleague here also told me about a website called Get Emoji. And so you can go there, you can find an emoji, and you copy and paste too. But if I do the... Um, Windows icon key and period at the same time. Oh, look at that. Um, inventions. Well, maybe this is a writing assignment. I would put the handwriting. Um, oh, I a GIF will not work. Okay. Not in a title, but maybe I want to go here. Let's see what else we got. Um, <laughs> I'll just do this one for fun. Okay. The I don't know. <laughs> That's how you can get emojis. Sometimes if you're using them consistently and your module should be set up consistently so that there's the objectives page, the learning page, the uh, discussion, the assessment or assignment, right? Consistent module organization. Then if you're using emojis, go consistently with the emojis so students get used to those. Okay. So I'll just put that for fun. Um, I'm going to next talk about embedding, okay? You, do you use PowerPoint in your teaching? Okay. And then what I've seen some teachers do, I don't really get the point, but I guess some teachers do this. They've shown a PowerPoint in class, and then they put the PowerPoint slides in Canvas. Well, it's good for students who may have missed class, I suppose. But if I just put what I did here is I added a PowerPoint as a file, okay? I don't recommend. First of all, look at what it looks like. What this will look like is not a PowerPoint. It's gonna look like a PDF. It's just gonna look like a PDF. It's kind of like, you know, just scrolling down through a boring old PDF, okay? I want it to go like, hey, answer this question. What do you think it is? Okay, next, you know, kind of like a PowerPoint show. So also, if I just put the PowerPoint as a file, do you think students know what to do with that? Not really. So it's better to embed your content on a page. Better to embed, right? Sure, go ahead. Angela? Unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Okay, so um, what you can, what I would recommend, and this, you know, let's say that I have this, this term, and then next year at this time, I've kept my, but I changed the slides. Oh my goodness, I have to re-upload the file. And that, so if you do use PowerPoint, create a page. If you have Office 365, let me just show you really quick if I can find one that I have open. Let me close a couple things. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so we have Office 365, okay? And um, what I would do is go there. I've created a PowerPoint maybe in Office 365 PowerPoint, or I've just gone to my OneDrive and uploaded, right? So you can upload a PowerPoint file. And so here, let me find it. Here's that same PowerPoint, all right? In Office 365, I can go to file, share, embed, and create a page with that embed code. So let me just go here instead. So I'm going to add a page instead of just having a file with no context and students not knowing what to do. So I'm gonna create a new page. 
I need to call it Okay. I would probably put some instructions. Please watch this slideshow and take notes on the handout provided in class. Okay. Save time. I won't. Yeah, a little bit different. I'm going to show that in one second. Yeah. So let me just do this preview real quick. Uh, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Students, when I say that, students will be progressing through a slideshow rather than just scrolling a PDF. Okay. Yes. So does that work with Google Slides? Question. Mm -hmm. Question. Yeah. If it's just like a PPTX and you upload it into a page, um, it's not going to look really great. It's going to look like that PDF. If you upload it to Office 365, it's stored online, and that's where you can get the embed code. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great question. Thank you. Okay. Just to use that same page, um, do you create videos for your class instructional videos, or do you find stuff on YouTube? Either. Yeah. Okay. Either. A little bit of both, right? Both create and curate. So um, I have a video of that same slideshow. And so what I want students to do is to watch that video. So embedding with YouTube is quite easy, right? And so I would not just put a link, you know, just an external link. Instead, I would put it on a page with some instructions. So here I have this YouTube video that I created of that same slideshow so students can hear me. I go to what? Share, right? Now what? Embed. I get the embed code. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that page. Um, so I would put something like, please watch this video, take notes on the handout provided in class or something, right? So again, two ways to embed, the three dots in the cloud or the toggle on of the embed code, paste it in and there it is, okay? And I'll toggle back off, see if it works. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So there's the video. Now, if I have a handout, at my school, we do create some packets, even for classes that never come in person, that students pick up. And I don't know, if you create instructional video, do your students just watch that video and just absorb and remember everything? Do they? Yeah, I usually provide them with a note taking form. So it will have things that they need to listen and fill in the blanks because they don't know how to take notes and they're just passively watching. They're not going to remember tomorrow. So I have a handout that they get the paper, but sometimes they're confused. What page? I don't know where this is, blah, blah, blah. So what you can do with Word or PDF is you can embed without having to put anything online, you can sort of embed a file. So let's say here, I have this video and I want to put some instructions. I put, watch this video and take notes on the handout. This is the handout. Okay, so I created a handout, a, uh, like a listening guide, and I have it as a file. How do I insert a file into a page? Do you see up here? Which one? Tell me when to stop. Stop. You're right. Okay. <laughs> yes. So I have a, um, I'm going to upload it. I have it on my desktop. Um, here it is. A handout to go along with that video. They have the physical paper handout, but you know, there's a visual for them to match it up with what's in their hand, um, in their packet. I click submit. Well, here it is, but let me just save. Let me just save. Will your students, they're on a phone, for example, they may know that this is a download button, but what's going to happen? What's going to happen? They're going to download this. It's going to take them to a, another window or, oh. So what we want to do is make this visible in line. 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to edit again. Okay, and right now it just looks like a link. I'm going to click on that. What do you think now? Link options. Now what? Preview inline. Okay, preview inline will make just if I just choose this, they're not going to see the full thing. It may be a little bit slower to load, but I want them to see the full handout, kind of like it's embedded. So I'm going to choose preview inline and expand preview by default. Okay, and done. Let's see how the internet is here. One thing to mention, if I want some, if I want this, now this is something I, maybe I wouldn't know that students even do because it's not an assignment, it's just a page. It has no point value or anything. If I want this to appear on students to do list, when they log in on the right panel, I'll show you my to do list in a moment. Teachers have a to do list when something gets submitted. You see that on your to do list. I'm going to give it a due date. So students will kind of be reminded that they'll see that on the to do list. I'm going to give it a due date and I'm going to add it to the student. Oh, sorry, publish, not that one. Um, we'll publish it today. We'll make it um, to do list. They need to do that by Monday. Okay, we'll just say. Now it's going to appear on their to-do list. Let's save it and see what it looks like. See how the internet is. Okay. So they see the video. I would have put some instructions there. And here it is. It could be a PDF or a Word document, but they can see it, not just as a link. Mm -hmm. So, but if it's like that, they can't um, annotate it or anything. No. So if you made it instead an assignment with that video in the notes and then marked it as annotate, then they could annotate it like notes right true. there, submit it, and then they would have a record of it with all That's of That's true. Notes. They could. So that would be, that would be yeah, yeah, if you wanted really like accountability. Or for, just mm -hmm. if they wanted to make notes right there. Yeah. So yeah, the they could do that too. Mm -hmm. that, Another option. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's it. Doesn't, that doesn't work on phones. Yeah, exactly. If I made this as an assignment, I could also have like a text box where they are typing in some words too. Yeah, exactly. Um, it could it could be the assignment is a Google form that they they fill out after they watch the video. For me, I'm just happy if they watch the video. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, let me go home and look at the student view for a second, because let's see if it appears on the to do list. It appears on the to do list for the student right there. So at least that's a reminder. And once they've you know, I'll talk about. Um, how you can add prerequisites and things in just a moment. Okay, question, go ahead. Do you recommend or not recommend? Say that one more time, sorry. Do you recommend? recommend? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know if you can't. Well, let's check it out. You're asking great questions. Mm -hmm. Announcements. So let's say I added an announcement. Can you put it on the to do? I've never seen that before. Ah, Monica, do you think? I don't see, I don't think you can put it on the to do. The announcements are not my favorite because they, like here, I can embed something in an, an announcement, but when it comes to their email, it's gone. So you want to use only hyperlinks and announcements, not embedding. It won't come through in the email. It will come through on Canvas, but when they get the email announcement in their email, anything you've embedded is gone from the announcement, unfortunately. So it's something I really, I don't see, I don't see an option of to do for announcements, but that's a great question. And you know what, Canvas, it's open source and they take many different teacher recommendations and suggestions. Like one I would really love is um, if you use Google Sites, 
Any of you create a Google site? You know, when you create a Google site, you can click on to see what it looks like on a widescreen and a phone. Mm -hmm. I would love that on Canvas because when I look at something that I've created on a phone, it doesn't look as good. <laughs> that would be nice. So we should give those um, suggestions. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my homepage. All right. Um, so you asked about Google, Google Docs, Google. Let's say that I have, let me go here. One second. Okay, let me close some things out. Okay, we talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Okay, let's say you want to embed a Google Doc in a page. That's so easy. It's changed just a little bit. Um, what you'll need to do is go File, and you'll want to go to Share. Now what? This changed just recently. Publish to the web, and then you get the embed code. That's how you can embed a Google Doc in, and that's really nice. Some teachers build all of their Canvas courses on Google Docs. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I've got a Google Doc. Go to File. Used to be in a different spot. Share. Publish to the web. And then you see the link, but you also get the embed code. Very similar with Google Slides. If I just share right here and they're just going to have a hyperlink. They're going to have to open it in a new tab and, you know, chaos. So instead, go file, share, publish to the web, embed. And then you will see a nice slideshow viewing as a slideshow embedded in a Canvas page. Okay. Good question. I imagine. I, I'm not a numbers person, so... I wish I could, I knew that. Google Forms, okay? Slightly different. Google Sheets, yes, thank you. Google Forms, slightly different. I have I use Google Forms to, to get feedback from students, week two, week four, okay? And so instead of just sending the link, I put it in a page with some instructions. Please, you know, fill this out. So I go to send, and there it is, the embed code, okay? Well, sometimes we may want to embed other sites. So someone mentioned Quizlet, okay? You could just put the link here, yeah, but then, you know, students, there's so many different activities. Maybe I, I want them to do some of the activities. So with Quizlet, where you're looking for the embed code, after you um, see your flashcard stack, um, I believe it's the three dots, the three dots, okay, for Quizlet you go to embed, but then you choose which activity you want to embed in your pages. I want to embed match, learn, test, flashcards, only the flashcards. So students are not leaving Canvas. It's inside Canvas still, okay? Um, do you use WordWall? Anybody? I love it. Okay, you need to check it out. You create an account. I think I'm not logged in really quick. So let me log in. Okay. So to find, you can create with a free account. I'm all about free. Um, you can um, you can create, I think it's three to five activities. Okay. With a free account, you can just find other people's activities. So much easier. So let's say that I am teaching, oh, I don't know. Let's go to, um, so what you need to do is go to community down here. My students love this, the Gen Z, the gamification, right? Um, so I made an activity once uh, it, for teaching modals. Um, I tried it out the first time. I sent students to Zoom, uh, breakout rooms. Someone, someone shared their screen and they were working. It looked like a Pac-Man game. I couldn't get them back from the breakout rooms. They were loving the game so much. And so let's say I'm teaching gerunds and infinitives, just to give an example. You want to go through the game first, because sometimes people from other countries are created. Like if you teach grammar, I don't agree with some of their grammar. <laughs> okay. But let's say that I like uh, this one. Okay. So I choose one. The embed code is right there for me. Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay, the embed code is right there. Um, once in a while, a Padlet, same sort of thing. Padlet, go to share, 
embed code right there. Okay. But sometimes you have a website that you really like and you want to put in Canvas. Let's say I'm doing simple present tense. Okay. And uh, hello, I don't see any embed code. Oh, I can't embed it. I'm just gonna have to link it. No, I want to embed it. I will embed it. How can I embed it? There is there are multiple tools, but this is a simple one. I frame generator. It makes the code for you. So let's say I like this simple present tense. Copy the URL. Go to I frame generator. Paste the URL. Generate. Oh, okay, let's try it out real quick. Let me go to my pages and make a page and see if it works. Oh my goodness, makes me so nervous, but I'll try it. I, I don't know, I don't know, you know? My luck is sometimes on, uh, wavering. Um, simple present tense game. Remember there are two ways I can go to the cloud here or the uh, embed toggle. Some pages may be very vertical or very horizontal, okay? If you find out like, let me just go ahead and publish it and see what it looks like. I'll just save it. If you find out, oh no, it's students are gonna have to scroll. Look at that. I don't want them to have to do that. That's okay. I can go back here. And I want to go back to the embed code. So I toggle that back on. And I'm not a coder. I'm not a coder. You just play around with it. I see that the width is 600 and the height is only 400. So let's multiply it by three or something, right? Let's, let's just try that out. Six times three, help me, 1800. It might be too huge. Maybe I'll just go a little by little. Let's, let's change this to eight, yeah. Double, okay, I like that one. What was this? 1,200, 800. Thank you, thank you. Math people in the house. <laughs> I frame it better. It's still, I might wanna work with it a little bit better, but now students are still inside campus. Okay, all right, I think, what time do I finish? Six minutes. Yeah, no. Um, thank you. That was my next thing. Iframe and better will not work with all uh, websites like Jamboard. Jamboard, as you know, it, it doesn't even work well on phones. Students need that app. So then you need to work with your IT people to have the Jamboard integration with Canvas. Okay, it just won't embed. Okay, so sorry about that. Same for my Google site with the multiple tabs. It won't work with the iframe and better. So a couple more things. Let's say that I go here and I'm just playing around and I, I delete that. Oh, oh no! Oh my God, what did I do? I was working on that for hours. There is something called undelete. It's not foolproof. It's not 100%. You go here to the name of your course. You can see I have the name of my course. It's my school, my courses, my course number. I'm not going to go to pages. I'm going to delete that and put undelete, the word undelete. Please, please, you can see what you've deleted. Thank you, Canvas. Oh, so then I can restore things, okay? It's not foolproof. Um, another thing with uh, pages, assignments, and so on, say you made a little change, like, oh, I like it how it was before, actually, I don't, I saved it, what am I going to do? Well, pages have a history as well. Did you know that? Oh my gosh, you learned so many things today. So I just, I, maybe I want to revert to the pre, it will show you all your previous versions, and you can revert to a previous version. All right, I think I have like two or so minutes. Sure. So you just go to your course title up there in your, you go and delete everything except for, now I don't know how your school does it. My school will have courses and the course number. 
And after that last forward slash, type in the word undelete. And then you'll see the undeleted items, okay? Last thing that I wanna talk about really quick is um, just prerequisites and requirements, okay? So I have this module. I have it all, oh, it's my favorite module. Oh, I love my, okay. Students who are inexperienced, they make, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, take the quiz right now. Oh, you didn't look at it, the other stuff first. If you want to control how students progress through a module, you have that control. Once you've created your module, you go to the three dots for your module. Then you go to edit. Okay, maybe you, I don't know about you, how many, how many modules do you publish at a time and have available to students? Your whole course? I just do like one week at a time. Because, um, you know, I met a, a teacher once who teaches in the math department in my school. She goes, she teaches 16 weeks. And she said, I just publish everything. For me, I'm a, I would be a student like, oh, my God. Oh my, oh, my God. I have so much to do here. Now, I understand that some students need to see everything to pace themselves. My students, I don't want them jumping ahead. I scaffold my lessons in a way that I don't want them jumping ahead two weeks. So you can add a prerequisite of a module that they finish one module or view one module if you're publishing more than one module that they viewed and gone through one module before they go to that module you can control that if you're publishing more than one module at a time that's prerequisites but otherwise within your module each item you go to requirements okay so my first one is just introduction objectives, what you're going to learn. I just want them to view it. That's all. Okay. That's all. Okay. Then I go to the next item. The second item down is the note taking. This is what you were talking about making the note taking an assignment. I don't want, I don't want them just to view it. I want them to mark it. So they're going to get this little circle that they have to check off when they've done it. Mark as done. Then I go to the next one. Let's say the next one is, I believe, a discussion. Let me see. Where's the discussion? Well, I can't find it. Let's just imagine. Do I have it there? There it is. Discussion. I want them not just to view the discussion. No, they have to contribute to the page. Okay. Etc. So then they're they're going through in the order that I kind of want them to go through, right? So those are requirements, and then I can update. All right. Um, and then I think that's just all the time I have left. Now, let's say I created this course and I want to copy it over. Well, then what I do is um, your school may have different ways to do this, but if you're copying, copying within the same account, within the same um, you know, school, then um, what I can do is I can simply, um, I can go to the settings and export. And then I have my new course. So here's the export button. This one will actually download, okay? This one will download. This would be really good if you're teaching at a different school. So I quit this job and I get another job, but I'm going to keep my content. I, I can download this file and upload into my new school's account. Or what I can do if I'm at my same school is simply I go to um, I go to my new account and I import. And my new course is empty. So I select from one of my past courses like that. Okay. So that's all the time I have. Thank you for joining me. Yes, I'll put the hand up on a uh, handout. Yeah, there it is. All right. Um, thanks, everybody.